With Ananobi, I think you look at Philadelphia as the biggest competition for New York because Philadelphia has significant cap space, right? I think priority one for them is Paul George with the Clippers. Is George going to extend with the Clippers, resign with the Clippers? If not, I think Philadelphia has a big opportunity there to go in and get Paul George. But if George is off the table, I think they turn their attention to a player like Ananobi, where you could come in if you're Philly, you could make a really aggressive offer. You could force the Knicks to go maybe a little bit beyond where they are comfortable going salary-wise for Ananobi. Uh, and if nothing else, you impact their cap sheet moving forward. So that's the way I'm looking at the Ananobi free agency. Maybe Orlando, maybe OKC comes in and then expresses some interest. But I, I just think at the end of the day, it's going to be the Knicks. It's just a matter of what the number is, what the length of the deal is, what the protections on the contract is. You talk to people around the league, everybody kind of throws out that $35 million a year number as something that's reasonable, logical for Ananobi as a starting point. So we'll see exactly where this thing goes uh, a few days from now. But CP, Ananobi, your thoughts on the contract you would like to see him re-sign to and how his offseason may go? Yeah, well, a as you mentioned on, on the Hoops Hype podcast with, with you and Michael Scotto and, and Steph Bondi, that $35 million, that's about the number that I'd expect OG Ananobi to sign for. And he could, as you said, make the Knicks sweat it out a little bit and maybe take a meeting with Philadelphia or the OKC Thunder. We know those teams will have cap space. And does that drive the price up for the Knicks just a bit? But if I'm Leon Rose, this is a no-brainer. You, you traded RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly, two of a young core for OG Ananobi, who is become a critical piece for the Knicks chances in, in being that premier team as we open the show with. And so uh, there's no number that's too high for me when it comes to OG Ananobi. Injury risk be damned. He has to be in the Knicks uniform come next fall for them to even have a chance at uh, being the Kings of the East. Yeah, CP, I feel like uh, for what you gave up to get OG Ananobi, uh, anything less than retaining him will be seen as a failure for in the eyes of many Knicks fans. But in addition to that, whatever money you thought he was going to be able to be worth uh, at the end of the regular season, at the end of the playoffs, last night showed you he's probably going to be worth more than that because you're going to need to go through Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum to even have a shot at being the Kings of the East. And we've seen there's enough data out there to justify that sort of bag that OG is going to want to demand uh, this offseason. Jeremy Grant, a great example. You look at the Minnesota Timberwolves. Jada McDaniels is a great example. Having two-way guys that are wings that can guard uh, the stars of the league, including Brown and Tatum, are going to be at a premium this year. Look at the Philadelphia 76ers. They got a bird's-eye view of just how good OG and Anobi is, and it wouldn't shock me if they helped drive up the price to, to sign OG, not just because he's a good player, but you get to take him away from that Knicks team that eliminated you from the playoffs this year. So, I mean, I expect a lot of gamesmanship this offseason, and uh, I guess it's all going to benefit OG at the end because I think in, even with the injury risk, it's not going to stop uh, the bag that he wants to get this offseason. Yeah, I'm with you guys. Uh, not a price too high for Ananobi for the Knicks. you got to bring him back.